Technology and Training, a new DVD from Consultants and Cleaning. Dick Olick, CBSE, explains how traditional one-size-fits-all training just doesn't work in today's environment. Now is the time to adjust to the different age groups that work with you and the different personalities within those age groups. Dick helps you understand how MP3 players, YouTube training, webinars, DVDs, iPads, cell phones, and a myriad of other tools will enhance your training and reduce your turnover. Come to www.consultantsandcleaning.com to learn more. Welcome to Tripodcast, episode 230. It's Monday, July 23rd, and Dick Olick asks, Are you in tune? No, this isn't a music test, and we're not working on your guitar. We're working on your accounts. In this Tripodcast, Dick helps you find hidden money in some of those accounts. Let's listen in. I've entitled this Tripodcast, Are You in Tune? Now this is not about music, but it's about being in tune in your company. You know, one of the exercises that we did in our organization uh, uh, for years was to do a twice yearly retuning or checkup of each of our accounts. Now what do, you, what do I mean by that? Uh, first of all, we had our computer system flag so that a retuning worksheet was cranked out every six months on the or on the appropriate month uh, for each of the area managers to complete a retuning worksheet uh, along with their cleaning staff on these on, on each of their particular accounts so what did we check let me just kind of give you a checklist of things that we that we would look at that uh, actually found us a bunch of bucks uh, first of all, did we have the appropriate amount of supplies and equipment in the building? You know, we found lots of stuff in our building. In other words, we found out that uh, maybe things changed. Maybe we, we didn't need that little uh, mini auto scrubber anymore because of change of floor surfaces. Uh, and all of a sudden it's just sitting there in the closet. And we just went out and bought one because we didn't have, we needed one for another account and we didn't have one and we could have gone and grabbed this one from that account. So, you know, that, those are the kinds of things we found. What about the supplies? You know, um, we had supply deliveries in our, in all of our accounts every two weeks. And we, we also had budgets and we found out sometimes that those budgets weren't necessarily right and the people would store up supplies and so we had to bring back supplies and bring back at I actually found an auto scrubber one time in one of our buildings sitting beside the ele behind the elevator uh, just in case they might need it sometime but they didn't need it anymore we used to have to have it every night but uh, they changed the floor surface to carpet but we didn't we decided not to bring the auto scrubber now an auto scrubber is a pretty big investment you know, and for us just to have it sitting there behind the elevator uh, in the elevator equipment room was kind of a waste of money. But what about the janitor's closet? Is it neat? Is it clean? And one of the other tripod casts that we have, we talk about the customer relations, you know, customer attitude toward our company, uh, positive or negative. They come and look at our closet. So how does our closet look? Another thing that we checked is, did we have a current cleaning schedule in the closet? Um, it should be, even if it's not changed, it should be, you know, put it, date it today's date. I mean, the date that you do it. I can remember um, touring with a uh, client of mine a couple of years ago, and we were we were touring this facility, and I looked in there, and it had a uh, cleaning schedule. September 1st, 1994. Now this was at that time 2010. Now, I've got to love them. They had, uh, they had the account all those years, but you know, if they get a client that's unhappy, walk through, see there, you don't even have an up-to-date cleaning schedule in your building. You know, so I suggest, that we, we always went through, if that was the appropriate month and we put in a new schedule, even, even if it you know, it didn't change. We put in a new one dated that date so that it was always at least no longer, no more than six months old. 
And the, the fact remains that things do change in that building. Uh, they reconfigure, they change walls, they, they put different, they put carpet in instead of tile, tile instead of carpet, wood instead of tile, whatever, and we need to change specifications many times. And I also found that many times that if, uh, if a company downsized uh, in a certain area, unless I was retuning that, I probably didn't know about it. But if they added one person, 10 square feet, my people wanted more time. Anyway, that's that's a story for another tripod cast. But anyway, also, is there a current list of customers after our emergency numbers? How do we get a hold of our customer in the event that uh, uh, there's an emergency? What about do we have our procedures listed and posted in case of an emergency? Do we know what to do? Do our people know? If there's an emergency, who do they call? Where do they go? If, if, they, if somebody is injured on the job, what's the procedure? Is it there in the closet so that they know it's there? And is it current? Is it current? By the way, as a side story, I got an account, a large, large account for me, a 19-story building one time because there was a water leak in a building at, on Christmas Eve and they called the they called three different numbers that they had for the cleaning contractor and they were two of them were out of order and one of them said I don't work there anymore and they didn't know how to get a hold of the contractor and so they called me the day after Christmas and said you want this job no don't want this 19th story job but I mean I got the job just for that reason because they could not get a hold of their contractor in the event they had an emergency so do you have that listed in the closet? So if the customer needs to get a hold of you after hours, how do they how do they do that? On the weekends, I'm talking about, you know, or on a holiday, how do they get a hold of you? Are the MSD sheets up to date? You know, have you got the have you got them where they're where they're prevalent and are that they can be seen by a governmental agency or the co or the customer and are they up to date? Do you have the proper labels on all of the sprayers? That's that's one that I can catch almost every company on. You know, they got Rosie's cleaner on them, or they got, you know, they've written something in a magic marker on the side of the bottle uh, without the label on it. That's expensive if you get caught doing that by by OSHA. Has the workload changed in the building so that it it will cause a change in the hours that you need in that facility, either upward or downward? Is the budgeted average wage still the same? In other words, are you, you know, you when you set the budget way back in the olden days, you set it at X, X dollars per hour to, to pay the people on the average. Is that still appropriate? Does that need to be changed? Is it up or down? Are you constantly uh, uh, over budget, but you know you're paying everybody in a building 30 cents over what you budgeted, and you can't, and, you know, you keep, keep catching heck from the from the office or from accounting or from the manager saying you're constantly over budget. Yeah, yeah, because I'm paying more. Well, let us change the budget. Or should we be changing the budget? Should we be paying more? You know, that, these are all discussions that we had during this retuning process. Valuable, valuable discussions because it, it forced everybody in the organization to relook at that account to make sure that we were being as effective and as efficient as we could possibly be. So is the, the account manager or the area manager would review it with me then, the worksheet. After they were done, they would bring it to me. We'd sit down and we'd review it and make any changes, hours or, or wages that we needed to. Uh, they better have a good reason. You know, if they said, I want to give everybody a 50 cent raise or this budget's not right anymore. Uh, because, you know, unless we went to the customer, that came right out of the, out of the numbers. And sometimes it was very, very, real that we needed to you know my job was th this retuning process was to make it right to make it as near accurate as possible and if it needed to go up it needed to go up but it also needed to come down if it did you know initially when we started doing this people would say oh they're here to cut the budget and we weren't there necessarily to cut the budget now but what we did do is we found a lot of excess supplies a lot of excess equipment uh, that we could bring back 
and put back in the warehouse. We made a bunch of money that way. I mean, we saved a bunch of money that way because those supplies could be restocked and sent back in. There's a lot of other things you can include. Are the keys up to date? You know, it can just go on and on and on, but these were some of the key things that we looked at. Uh, in fact, I've made a note here. In my notes to you, you can add other things that pertain to your company that, uh, that I haven't included here. So let me suggest to you that you try tuning up. Nice, just might be that you'll bring some big dollars back home. You've been listening to a Tripodcast, short video and audio presentation about important topics in our industry. If you're a current subscriber to the Tripodcast, thank you. We appreciate it. If you're not yet a subscriber, please check it out. It's free and it's easy. Come to www.tripodcast.com, enter your email address on the right-hand column, and click subscribe. We'll send you out a new Tripodcast every Monday morning.